Hey, dojo friends. I wanted to show you something really interesting. These are Ninja Realm magazines from way back in the 1980s. Long way before many of you were born out there, I'm sure. But the older people out there might recognize these. I have dozens of these originals. And this was our internet back then. And this was a way of communicating in the martial art world from someone in Japan to someone in the U.S. These were by Mr. Hayes. Uh, Stephen Hayes, and I also have the Tetsuzan's originals from the 1980s from Hatsumi Sensei in Japan, and then I have a whole bunch. The Ninja Realm turned into Masubi Journal, which I have all of them here. This was, again, the way we communicated. We had no computer back then. The only way was to get these newsletters in the mail, and you'd read them, and there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of really cool articles and book covers in here from way back when we trained. And this is all we had. You'd get one of these in the mail, you'd grab your friends in the backyard, and you would try to copy or imitate what they were showing. But the earliest one that I received was at age 11, and this was, let me see, I have them from 85, 84, 83. Here's one from 81. This was the first one I received at age 11. Autumn of 1981 was Ninja Realm magazine by Mr. Hayes. And I want to go through this with you to show you a couple of the articles. We could spend a year reading through these, but I don't want to bore you too much. But you can Google a lot, and these aren't for sale anymore. You can't find them. They're collector's items. I may actually maybe selling some of these on eBay because I have them in scanned form. If you're a collector of martial arts or you like to see the history of where these things came from way before the internet. This is what we had to do, is read these and then find the, and then in the back were seminars that you could go to or different exercises that you could do on ninjutsu things. So if you have a moment, I'd like to take you closer at Ninja Realm. This is volume five, number three, from autumn 1981. Okay, let's take a look at Ninja Realm. Let me just show you a couple of the covers while we're here. Um, Mr. Hayes here in kind of a Hicho no Kamai with the sword. We have a scene from Japan. That was the cover of the Cold Moon poetry book by Mr. Hayes. Uh, this is Bud Malmstrom doing a takeori and a kick. Mr. Hayes at one of the camps that we went to in Ohio. It's a nice castle there. Here's one of Mr. Hayes hiding in a swamp to show this kind of in tonjutsu, how to disappear. Here's just a couple of kind of bad black and white photos of one of the camps we went to back in the 80s. Here we are. That's uh, Nagato-san when he was very young, defending against someone. Not sure if that's Muramatsu or somebody there. Look how low his stance is. So this is what we trained to back then. This is all we had, had Mr. and Mrs. Hayes there in Japan. Again, more. But I want to show you this one here because this is the first one that I have. There might be a couple more before this. Here. Okay, Ninja Realm. So here we are, autumn 1981, as you can see, volume five, number three, and about the cover, it tells you the cover here, enshrouded in smoke, a ninja in classical Japanese garb, entwines his fingers into the Kuji In, position for engaging in the seventh level of power called Adetsu. The astral travel that provides the freedom from the limits of time and space. This is from a woodlock print by Hatsumi Sensei in his collection. There you go, there's the cover there of this samurai warrior, a ninja. But here you have a book promotion for The Spirit of the Shadow Warrior, one of Mr. Hayes O'Hara series books, which of course I bought. And you can see down here, the price was $6.95 back then, 95, 95 cents for postage, look at that. 6% sales tax, and you would mail this to Kettering, Ohio, Shadows of Ego Books, 
in here we just have the indent here. Editorial by Mr. Hayes. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but there he is writing to us. And then you had letters from people that would send in letters. Um, I'm not going to go over all these, but these are just some letters from people asking questions about ninjutsu. And, you know, we knew nothing back then, so this was all brand new to us. Here we are talking about teacher and student training. We have different products, updates from Chiba City in Japan, printed media. Again, here we have Kamai, the stance of the ninja and how to align your body and skeletal structure to defend yourself. Very simple line drawings. Uh, let's see who wrote that article. Bear with me. Yeah, that was what that was by Mr. Hayes. Fictional glimpse of Japan's ninja, so the field crows laugh. There's an article there. Some more block print photos. A little bit of Japanese and how people mispronounce the word jutsu. So uh, people would also would always pronounce it jutsu. So if you hear someone saying ninjutsu, they usually don't know Japanese. And he's telling you, no, it's actually pronounced jits, ninjits, or ninjits. It's not ninjutsu, it's ninjits. And that was a very common thing he was saying back in the 80s of people mispronouncing the art of the ninja. This is what I wanted to look at, Ninja no Kokoro, the heart of the ninja. This is an article from 1981, so written by Masaki Hatsumi Soke in July of 1981, with permission from him to share this letter. I want to read this letter in its entirety because I had people ask questions about the Ura and Omote, the kind of front and back side of martial art training. And the longer that you train, it becomes more than physical training. It becomes kind of mental and even spiritual. Now, does all this still apply now is kind of up to your interpretation. You have to remember the context was in the 1980s, teacher to student transmission, this Okuden transmission from teacher to student who they were allowing us to read into. Hatsumi Sensei writes, Hey San, today not too many people understand the true scope of what ninjutsu really is. Even in Japan, the birthplace of the art, few individuals have an accurate concept of ninjutsu. This is understandable to some degree, in that the art was held in secret by a few families in central Japan for many generations. For reasons of personal survival through hundreds of years of social and religious persecution, the art was hidden from all but the innermost circles of the ninja clans. When the true facts cannot be known, people will often make up their own versions of the unknown stories. Hence, all the maligning tales condemning ninja as low-class, immoral, and honorless assassins for hire. Fortunately, all of your years in training with me at my home have given you a knowledge of the true ninja ways. I am confident that you will do a good job in bringing the art of ninjutsu out of the shadows of misunderstanding and into the light of truth for all of your followers in the Western world. In teaching others in your role as Shidoshi and my personal, excuse me, my personal representative, you will learn much. To fully mature, here's an interesting part, to fully mature as a ninja warrior in all aspects of life requires 40 years of study. The first 20 years of your life are spent in learning the omote, or frontal aspects of the ninja's power. These are years for training in the concepts of honor, respect for super superiors and parents, love for your juniors, diligence and discipline in the training, and the strengths of justice, honesty, and forthrightness. The vast majority of martial arts systems stop at this level. This is very important. Martial arts systems stop at that level. The ninja must progress onward through the experience of life. Hatsumi goes on to say, the second 20 years of your training are spent in exploring the Ura, the rear aspects of the ninja's power, 
better known as the dark side of human nature. These are the years for training yourself in the ways that honor, respect, and love could be twisted out of shape and used against you, and for looking at realities in which true justice and benevolence are given appearances that terrify and bewilder the masses who lack the enlightenment or perspective. Weaker souls are quick to label such wisdom as evil or demons or devils. Do not fear the strength you gain. Ultimately, all is godly and all is a part of the universe which was created containing all. Nothing ungodly could possibly slip in accidentally as all is a manifestation of the God. The 40 years simply bring you full circle, having taken you through the full realm of human growth and awareness. You begin with the freshness of innocence, you gather the stains of worldliness, and return with the wisdom of innocence. You begin empty, you fill up along the way, you return empty. Forty years of training is no guarantee that you will ever be a master of the art. It, is, it merely readies you for the potential of total development, what I talked about last week, Tatsujin. From there, it is up to your own character, personal nature, and life destiny as how far you will go or advance. You will become a ninja in all the power that the world implies if you were meant to be such. I encourage you to keep right on going in your challenge of unfolding all the secrets and mystery of the ninja art and lifestyle. As my personal representative and overseer of Togakure Ryu Ninjutsu in the West, your own personal progress will be the inspiration for all of your students there. Signed, Dr. Masaki Hatsumi, 34th Soke of Togakure Ryu Ninjutsu. Isn't that an interesting article? Now, would Hei-san or Hatsumi-san agree with all of this? Perhaps, perhaps not. Since then, Mr. Hei started his own martial art called Toshindo. But back then, things were pure. Uh, the communication was quite clear and quite daunting to imagine having to train 40 years in the art. Now, I'm on my 52nd, 42nd year of training, and I do understand that there is an omote and uda side to training, and that mastery you can never really attain, but you have a hell of a time trying to chase it down, and that there are negative forces out there that will try to stop your training and pull you out and make you quit. But if you can endure it, it gets easier decade after decade if you're consistent in your training, and you have mentors to go by. So I wanted to share that article because it may apply to some of you out there who are younger and going through difficult times or who want to be inspired to start a martial art. There's no better time than today to start. Now, here we have a couple of ninja claws. Here, the Shuko. Look at back then, they were still $36. Ninja Ashiko foot spikes here for $32. Sold by Bob Malmstrom in Atlanta. Here's Way of the Spider. Here's a way to climb a wall and descend a wall. This article is by Jeffrey Davis. I wonder if that's Jeff Davis from the Boston Center where I used to train. Mark Davis runs the Boston Martial Arts, but I remember a training partner of mine who was Jeffrey Davis, young, dedicated practitioner, very gifted physically. I wonder if that's the same Jeff. It might be. Some of my friends from Boston could comment if that's Jeff Davis from the Boston Dojo. That would be very interesting if Jeff wrote this article. He, I don't think he's not training anymore. But isn't that cool how to scale down a wall? A couple of rudimentary pictures here. And what's this? A new book from O'Hara. So Mr. Hayes was really cranking out these books one right after the other around 1982, I would say. And here he is applying an arm bar to a student and breaking his elbow, or at least the appearance of it. Here's some more letters from people back then, four or five more letters. Here's a pen that you could buy called the Scribe, which was kind of a hidden dagger pen. 
Look at even back then it was 25 bucks. These prices have actually come down on these products. They were harder to get back then. Senban Shuriken you could buy. How much were these? We have a set for $4.95. No, $4.95 each, $25.95 for a set. $8 for the little case. You can get those cheaper now. A couple more letters from people. And here's some training opportunities in Dayton, Ohio in 1981 that we could go to. I was too young back then. I didn't start going to Ohio till I was about 14 or 15 because I was just a child basically. But I had these to read and imagine about. Here's Mr. Hayes' Ninja, their secret fighting art, promoting that, which was, was the only way you could promote was to get these out to sell to people your books. And here's if you wanted to join the Shadows of Viga. There's Bull Munthy, the chief instructor from Sweden back then. Uh, isn't this cool to look at these old, old magazines? It's This was our Google back then. The only way you could study was to get these in the mail every month. But we'll go over these and many more coming up soon. Uh, here are some from Hatsumi from... Takamatsu, there's all kinds of good information that still holds up. And then you have this giant tome here of the Masubi journals, which there are hundreds of these. Just as you can see, it's just so thick of articles that you and I could go over for hours and hours, but I don't want to bore you too much today. I just wanted to show you one of the older magazines and that article I wanted to read to you so that you can see the communication between teacher and student back then. I hope you enjoyed this short video. Kind of boring to some. I love this stuff. It's not boring to me. But not all martial arts can be physical, right? Some of this we have to go over to keep history clear and also to remember where our roots are in the martial arts. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you very soon and take care. Bye-bye.